Port 31 to 5 in the series. The three starters were 0 and 3 with a 12.83 earned run average. Feldman pitched his first shutouts in 2014 and earned his second career win against San Francisco. The Giants are now a season worst 10 games below 500 as they head to New York. Joining us now from his home in San Jose, Kevin Franzen, former Giants infielder and host of KNBR 1050, the Audible in the morning. And uh, Kevin, right off the bat, what do you make out, uh, out of that mess in Cincinnati? Man, that was not what I expected. Not all, I don't think many Giant fans were expecting what was going to go on this weekend. The amount of runs that they gave up, the amount of runs they didn't score, it was it's something that it was disheartening because you thought, you know, just a little glimpse of what, what could happen. And they go to L.A., win two of three, they get the day off. You're like, okay, we're going to get things going again and getting swept by the Cincinnati Reds. Not a good way to go. We are 34 games into the season, and that's not quite a quarter way in, into the campaign. But still, it's a pretty good sample size, 11 wins, 21 losses. And given that we know that Bumgarner isn't walking through that door anytime soon, do you see any reason for it turning around? Uh, you know, only on track record. That's the only thing you could really say because look at what Buster is doing right now, hitting about 360, but with a, not that much power going. Mm -hmm. So you can expect more power to come from him. Same thing from Hunter Pence, just from based off the past. And the more, more than anything, they have the track record. You know, there's, there's certain guys that Christian Arroyos, we don't know, right? I mean, he's just coming up. He's playing great baseball right now, but we're going off track record. And if it's what I could see, something's about, something needs to happen. And maybe the return of Brandon Crawford on Tuesday or Wednesday would be that thing. But you, there's got to be more to it. There's, there's a lack of passion coming from this team. Like the bats that they have, they're, they're, they're not one through nine fighting for the same thing. It looks like it's, you know, you were talking about a depth this year that they've not had in a long time. Well, that depth was tapped into early on, and you have guys playing every day that aren't supposed to be playing every day. Gorky Hernandez is not an everyday outfielder. So the moment they get Denard Span back, the moment they get Brandon Crawford back, we still don't know, but we can go off track records, and I think these guys can get back on track. Now, am I talking about like they can go on a 20-game winning streak? Absolutely not. I don't think that's the case. What options do you think Bobby Evans has? From everything I read, from everything uh, that I hear, there are no minor leagues options. Well, there's no minor league savior. Tyler Beatty isn't coming up. Eventually, he's going to be in that rotation. Not now. But the quicker they fall, the less it makes sense for Evans to try and orchestrate some sort of trade, whoever it was uh, might be that he would give up. Well, I mean, that's the, that's the give and take, right? I mean, what have, what have we gotten in the last few years here in San Francisco? We've gotten homegrown infield, a homegrown catcher, a, a pretty darn good staff, based, and, and Penn based off of all homegrown guys. So at some, time, at some point, you need to give up some things. Last year, they gave up Duffy and a couple minor leaguers to get Matt Moore, which I think everyone in this world should be excited about that they have Matt Moore. But you don't have the amount of guys that some organizations have. Because why? Because those organizations lost. Let's say this goes, keeps going on for another month. Now you're talking about in July, you're not looking at uh, trying to buy guys. You're maybe looking to sell off a few guys, maybe replenish some yeah. of the farm system guys. you got a Chris Shaw that is you know, a first baseman's superpower, like just ridiculous power. But can he handle left field? Who knows? That's the question we've seen. Mac Williamson, if he gets healthy, do they give him a shot and see if he's not the savior in left field, but at least maybe a stopgap for a little bit. We're going to talk Warriors basketball with you <laughs> in the next segment, but I have to. What is that thing over your right hand uh, shoulder that has dominated game day tonight? Uh, that thing is a art piece picked out by my wife. My wife, Amanda, has some serious taste, and that's going in here. <laughs> and I, I just... I haven't even realized until now. I thought it was part of cool. your man. I thought it was part of your man cave. No, no. I, it, going in the man cave, it would have been a little dark and dreary in there. It's got you know, not enough giant stuff for what we wouldn't want to talk about. Hey, take it from another married uh, guy. If your wife put it up, it ain't going anywhere. Hey, it's great. It's <laughs> awesome. It's beautiful. Right. Hey, oh, Kevin, uh, we're going to talk Warriors basketball in the next segment. So stick around, will you? All right. I think it looks great, really, Mrs. Francis. Uh, still to come, could John Daly get his first tournament win since George W. Bush within the Oval Office? And 
While the Warriors are taking care of business in Salt Lake, their coach spent the weekend in North Carolina. The latest on Steve Kerr next on Game Day. Joining us once again from his home in San Jose, not just a Giants infielder, also the host of the KBR 1050 in the morning show. And the big uh, revelation today is that Bob Myers said that uh, Steve Kerr underwent a, a spinal leak procedure, uh, Kevin, to repair that problem. What is your thought on Kerr not being with the team? I sense there's a void. I know they're undefeated, but also could be a mo motivating factor. All the Warriors uh, as a team say this is uh, more about Kerr than anything else, Kerr's long-term health. Absolutely. And this, can, you can, everyone could sense that this is like one-one for the Gipper type thing, you know? And they don't want to put it on just like because they want Steve Kerr to be on the court with him. No, they want Steve Kerr to be healthy. That's what we were talking about is number one, being healthy as a human being. Number two is just they want them to be on the court to be able to, you know, finish what they've started this, this entire process. Adding Kevin Durant last offseason was, you know, pretty special in itself. But we saw it last night. Last year when they, you know, Clay Thompson and Steph Curry struggled. They didn't have that third guy to go to, to to really carry them. And look what happened last night. He's the second Warrior player since Nate Thurman to go, what, back-to-back 25-10 games? That's insane. If you're the opponent, you played about as, as well as I think you can play if you're Utah. How demoralizing is it, uh, not just for the Jazz, but anybody else that is looking at that game tape from last night? Well, it's got to be demoralizing to the Jazz. I think for, like, the Spurs or Rockets, they still look at it as a challenge. But let's go with the Jazz right now. I mean, you've thrown everything at them. And then one thing that's going on is this team keeps coming right back at you with something new. Look, Zaza outscored Clay last night. That was awesome. And, you know, Zaza poking fun at Clay. That's why this team is good. Because a guy like Zaza Pachulia, who is a role player on this thing, could go after a guy like a superstar like a Clay Thompson and have fun with it. It's a, it seems almost like a formality to the NBA Finals. Kevin Franson, you got a lot to talk about, my friend, this week. 10.50 a.m. We see you early, we hear you earlier in the morning. Kevin, thanks a lot. I appreciate you guys coming. Oh, okay, guys, Kevin Franson, Giants infielder, former Giants infielder, and the host of KNBR 1050. We'll be back. Uh... Sound kind of weird. Well, they have a the JV station.